We all know that pushing down on the brake pedal slows a car to a stop, but how does this happen? How does your car transmit the force from your leg to the wheels? How does it multiply force so that it is enough to stop something as big as a car or a truck? Lecture Overview This lecture explains at length the principles of friction, the components, and operation of the hydraulic brake system. Explain the basic principles of braking including kinetic and static friction, friction materials, application pressure, and heat dissipation. Describe the components of a hydraulic brake system and their operation including brake lines, the hoses, master cylinders, system control valves, and safety switches. Briefly describe the operation of drum and disc brakes. Understand Pascal's law of hydraulics. Be able to describe the difference between front and rear and diagonally split dual brake systems. Basic brake systems use a reservoir to store fluid until it is needed. A master cylinder to create pressure. Brake tubing to transfer the pressure to the wheels. Disc brakes that apply pressure to a rotor to generate the friction needed to stop the vehicle. Almost all vehicles use disc brakes on the front wheels. Some use disc brakes on all four wheels. Drum brakes that apply pressure to the rotating drum to generate friction. Drum brakes are often used on rear wheel of larger vehicles such as trucks and SUVs. Other components can include a vacuum brake booster that uses engine vacuum to increase brake pressure during emergency stops. A hydraulic brake booster uses a pump and accumulator to increase brake pressure during emergency stops. A proportioning valve to shift more brake force to the front wheels during heavy braking. An electronic control unit or ECU that uses a computer to control braking and improve vehicle stability. This shot slide shows a diagram of a typical braking system with the master cylinder, reservoir tubing, proportioning valve, your discs, drums, and a hydraulic type control unit. Energy conversion. Kinetic energy is the energy of a mass in motion. When it's time to stop the vehicle, the brakes which are connected to the vehicle press against the rotating surfaces, which is connected to the wheels. The friction between these two surfaces converts the moving kinetic energy into heat. When a car is traveling at highway speed, a large amount of kinetic energy is stored. This energy wants to stay in motion. This is inertia. Energy cannot be consumed, so its form must be changed. When brakes are applied, friction is used to change that motion into heat. The amount of heat generated depends on the weight and speed of the vehicle. Temperature in brake linings can reach 600 degrees Fahrenheit during a hard stop. Kinetic energy increases in direct proportion to the weight. If you double the vehicle's weight, its kinetic energy doubles. 
Kinetic energy increases in proportion to the speed squared. If you double the vehicle speed, its kinetic energy quadruples. The brakes must absorb four times as much heat to stop the vehicle. This slide shows a diagram of kinetic energy uh, versus weight and speed. Principles of hydraulic brakes. Automotive braking systems use the principle of hydraulics to apply the brakes. Since automotive brakes use hydraulic pressure, there are some hydraulic principles that need to be studied. The first is Pascal's Law, which states, changes in pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid at rest are transmitted undiminished to all points in the fluid and act in all directions. If this sounds a little overwhelming, let's break it up a little bit. What we say in an enclosed fluid, what we mean is in order for Pascal's Law to be true, you need to look at liquid in an enclosed container. Pressure is a fancy word for how much something pushes on its container and the things in it. When you blow up a balloon, the more and more air you blow into it, you are increasing the pressure. If you increase that pressure too much, then you will be putting more air in the balloon than the balloon is capable of holding, and the balloon will burst. Water pressure will act in the same way. So let's say you have a long closed tube of water with a piston at one end. If you push on the piston, then you are decreasing the amount of space the fluid has to take up. So it will push back on the piston even more. A hydraulic system is a closed system filled with liquid. Because liquids cannot be compressed when the pressure is applied to the master cylinder piston, the same amount of pressure is instantly applied to the entire system. So if 100 PSI of force is created at the master cylinder, then 100 pounds of PSI force will be seen at each wheel. If there were just one wheel cylinder at the other end of the hydraulic system and it had the same diameter as the master cylinder, that wheel cylinder would travel the same distance as the master cylinder and exert the exact same amount of pressure. But brake systems need much more pressure than the driver can apply to stop the vehicle. So they use force multiplication to increase the pressure of each wheel. Drum brakes have a larger cylinder volume than the master cylinder. So when pressure is applied, the brake travels a shorter distance but applies greater pressure. This diagram illustrates hydraulic force multiplication. You can see the different areas of the piston and how much the stroke is either e increased or decreased by size. Disc brakes are smaller and have less contact with the wheel than drum brakes, so they require even more pressure to create the same braking force. Disc brakes have even larger cylinder volume so they can take a greater advantage of force multiplication. Hydraulic systems only work because fluids cannot be compressed. If air is introduced in the system, the gas will compress under pressure and the system will not be able to apply full pressure to the wheels. Friction is the resistance to movement exerted by two objects in contact with each other. Two forms of friction come into play when controlling a vehicle. These are kinetic or moving and static or stationary. The amount of friction or resistance 
depends on materials in contact with each other, the smoothness of their rubbing surfaces, and the pressure holding them together. Kinetic or moving friction. Kinetic means in motion. The resistance between objects that are in contact with each other and in relative motion is called kinetic friction. As brakes on a moving vehicle are actuated, rough textured pads or linings are pressed against the rotating parts of the vehicle, either the drums or the rotors. Kinetic energy or the momentum of the vehicle is converted into heat by kinetic friction or rubbing surfaces causing the vehicle to slow down. The brakes pass this heat to or stationary friction. Static friction also plays an important part in controlling the vehicle. Static means at rest. Static friction is the resistance between objects that are in contact with each other but at rest. When brakes are applied, the friction of the rubbing surfaces slows the rotation of the vehicle down. When the vehicle stops, it is held in place by static friction. To move the vehicle, the brakes must be released. If kinetic energy overcomes static friction between the tires and the road surfaces, the vehicle wheels will lock up causing the vehicle to skid and become uncontrollable. So the most efficient braking comes just before wheel lockup. 